How Electric Engines Actually Work Imagine a sparkling contemporary aircraft flying across the world, fueled only by pure energy and fresh air. We hear a lot about electric cars, and it's obvious that scientists are working on land-based transportation alternatives to fossil fuels. But what about aircraft? In 2019, planes will use 18.27 billion gallons of gasoline. That's a long way from being carbon neutral. This is the grand vision of a new generation of jet thrusters, which is causing a lot of discussion in engineering laboratories all around the globe. But is this technology the answer to climate changes out of control and fossil fuel dependence? Or is simply a load of hot air? Today, join us as we take a figurative test flight with the electric plasma jet engine. Before we go into the technical aspects of electric plasma jet engines, let's just say that they're as thrilling as their name suggests. Now, let's have a look at how traditional jet engines operate. Ordinary jet engines drive the aircraft forward with a strong push, allowing the plane to fly at breakneck speeds. All jet engines, also known as gas turbines, work on the same principle. Air is drawn forward from the front of the engine by a fan. A compressor is used to raise the air pressure. The compressor is made up of several blades linked to a shaft. They spin at high speeds. The blades compress or squeeze the air. The gasoline is then sprayed into the compressed air, which is then ignited by an electric spark. Jet fuel, which is typically a kerosene-based petroleum combination, is ignited after being combined with compressed air. The resultant gas warms up quickly, causing it to expand explosively. This force is then used to operate fans or blasted straight from the rear engine, exhibiting traditional jet thrusts. Electric plasma jet engines, on the other hand, don't use any noxious hydrocarbons at all. Instead, they use heated plasma to provide the necessary propulsive acceleration of gas. To put things in perspective, this is the same as the thrust produced by a commercial jet engine. Our attention is closely drawn upward as a result of these advances. Condensation trails from aviation activity are more visible than ever before. But where are the electric planes? While you shouldn't expect to see a flying electric option at the airport anytime soon, electric aircraft do exist and technology is rapidly advancing. Since you've asked, plasma is just another state of matter, similar to solid, liquid, or gas. Plasma is formed under very precise conditions, such as in the burning core of a star or in the air around highly charged events like lightning bolts. If plasma can be intentionally superheated, an engine driven by its expansion may produce enough thrust to propel an aircraft, according to the hypothesis. This fundamental assumption has been tested in laboratories in the United States and Berlin, but the most promising recent discovery occurred in Wuhan, China, of all places. Professor Zhao Tang, a polymath who has worked at Caltech and Bell Labs on a variety of projects ranging from nanotechnology to artificial photosynthesis, was looking into the use of microwaves in the manufacture of synthetic diamonds. Tang had a light bulb moment and wondered whether a similar technique might be employed to develop thrust. To that aim, he and his colleagues at Wuhan University's Institute of Technological Sciences designed a method that ionizes compressed air by passing it through electrodes and pushing it through a quartz tube. For starters, this manufacturer uses a low-temperature plasma. Here's when the smart part comes in. The tube holding the plasma collides with a waveguide, which is basically a pipeline conveying microwaves produced by the magnetron. As it reaches the quartz tube, the pipe shortens significantly. As a result, the microwave collides with the low-temperature plasma as its narrowest point when its intensity is highest. When this occurs, charged particles in the plasma bounce rapidly, unleashing energy and a blinding 1000 degrees Celsius of heat. As a result, a thrust is created. Despite the fact that this newfangled gadget is still in its early phases of research, Tang is confident that it will be ready to power drones within a couple of years before moving on to manned aircraft. So, can we already put an end to oil drilling? Not yet at least. One major challenge Tang and his colleagues have yet to solve is the Hadean 1000's inability to agree on a burn temperature, which is much too hot for any aviation-grade engine housing to tolerate without suffering significant and perhaps fatal plasma erosion. 
There's also the issue of size, which is insignificant. Tang's microwave-powered Forester was able to raise a rattling 1 kg steel ball through a 24mm diameter tube in the lab. This could theoretically be immediately scaled up to power a viable jet engine in terms of basic force. However, the airflow would have to be increased to approximately 15,000 times. However, in the realm of engineering, small-scale projects rarely occur. If ever, compared to the enormous size of a commercial jet aircraft, the problem of how to electrically power the equipment in flight without access to the power grid is more difficult than any of those small niggles. Despite its numerous flaws, conventional jet fuel can transport much more energy than batteries can at the same weight. It is true that 43 times more energy is required, and when you need to go up in the air, weight matters a lot. Tang's experiment produced a push of approximately 28 newtons per kilowatt of electricity. For comparison, jet engines of the Airbus A320 generate 220,000 newtons of thrust. That implies any Tang jet-powered aircraft would use more energy than 78,000 kilowatts of power. Let's assume we're working with current battery technology. For a one-hour trip, you'll need 570 Tesla Powerwall 2 units, which isn't really useful either. Given that an Airbus 320 can only carry a third of that power of power walls as cargo, Tang, like other plasma jet experts, is waiting for advancements in battery technology or small fusion nuclear reactors to get his concept off the ground. In addition, the use of tiny conventional nuclear reactors, such as the Russian KLT-40S, has been proposed. Although the difficulty of radioactively shielding passengers, as well as the catastrophic expense of a disaster, renders this idea, shall we say, questionable. Even if enough power could be gathered on board an aircraft, analysts believe the cabling needed to get all of that energy to the plasma engines would be too expensive with present technology. Despite the Wuhan team's high promises, many experts think the technology is defective essentially, even if the power problems are addressed. When asked to comment on the study on Twitter last summer, Steve Barrett, an MIT professor of aeronautical engineering, was absolutely critical. This is wrong in terms of physics and measurements. He thundered after reading about the Wuhan steam steel ball experiment. What they've essentially done is like heating a stovetop pressure cooker until the valve rattles, which is called the result thrust. But pressure cookers don't fly. He went on to say that heating anything with a microwave or any other technique only works if you compress the air first, like a jet engine, which takes a lot of power. He stated, otherwise jet engines would not have compressors, and you could just ignite a candle and get thrust. Candles don't fly around either. Nonetheless, technology isn't completely worthless. For many years, NASA has been experimenting with electric plasma engines. They operate well in space without the friction of atmospheric pressure to overcome energizing xenon plasma. Even with such little power, they can achieve high enough speeds to accomplish interplanetary journeys due to months and years to continuous acceleration in the gulf of space. What are your thoughts? Can you envision taking a vacation on a plasma-powered electric airplane anytime soon? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Before leaving, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button for notifications of our future content. With that being said, see you in the next one.